Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Today we're continuing our series on the ICD-10-CM coding guidelines with emphasis on the 2018 updates. If you have not yet viewed part one of this series on the coding guidelines, please go back and view that video first as today's video is a continuation from that point. Also, with viewing that video, there was a homework assignment to go in and view, uh, view videos 1 through 9 on the Codemaster Coach channel. And yes, the videos are numbered on that channel. So if you go back after viewing part 1 of this series on the coding guidelines, go back and view videos 1 through 9 on my channel that really emphasize what's covered in part 1 of this series. Okay? So in continuation, today... We're still looking at, let me share with you the coding guidelines. Again, if you haven't had a chance, go into the CMS website, www.cms.gov, and in the search box, key in ICD-10-CM 2018, and it will take you to this 117-page document on the ICD-10-CM official guidelines for coding and reporting fiscal year 2018. Okay. And we are down at page 13 today. We're at the bottom of page 13, which starts with B. Okay. And that's the key area we're going to cover today general coding guidelines. And I think this is going to be the answer to a lot of questions that I get where students aren't getting the correct answer and what it is they're not getting the complete answer. So the key here is how to locate, it says number one, locating a code in the ICD-10-CM. To select a code in the classification that corresponds to a diagnosis or reason for visit documented in a medical record, first locate the term in the alphabetic index. Remember ICD-10-CM has two volumes. Volume 1, which is your tabular list at the end of the book, and Volume 2, which is at the front of the book, which is your alphabetic index. And it says to select a code in the classification that corresponds to a diagnosis or reason for your visit that's documented in your medical record, first locate the term in your alphabetic index at the front of your book, and then verify the code in the tabular list. Read and be guided by the instructional notations that appear in both the alphabetic index and the tabular list. And remember in part one, we talked about these instructional notations that appear in your alphabetic and tabular list. Now it goes on to say, it is essential, and I'm stressing this too, it is essential to use both the alphabetic index and the tabular list when locating and assigning a code. The alphabetic index does not always provide the full code. And so selection of the full code, including laterality, which could be right or left, and any applicable seventh character can only be done in the tabular list. And so when you see a dash at the end of an alphabetic index entry, it indicates that additional characters are required. And even if a dash is not included in the alphabetic index entry, it is necessary to refer to the tabular list to verify that no seventh character is required. Again, guys, I cannot stress that enough. The key, one of the major keys to coding is that you have to use both your alphabetic and your tabular list. Let me give you an example. If I were to give you a diagnosis to code and it said contusion, of chest wall left. Contusion of chest wall left. Let me show you how we'd code that. First of all, we'd use our ICD-10-CM and we go to the main term, contusion. And notice how at the top of my main terms, when I go down, I find the main term, contusion. And I said contusion of what? I said contusion of chest wall. Remember, they're in alphabetical order. So we go down and we find chest wall. 
And what does chest wall say? It says, see contusion of thorax. So it's taking us off a of chest wall to go to thorax. But we know this is still indicating that we're talking about the chest wall. So when I go to thorax, it's asking me, is it of the front back or of the front? Now I said chest wall, so it's of the front. And it's leading me to code S20.21. But notice that box with the check in it. That's letting me know there are additional digits required to correctly code this. So I need to look up in my tabular list S20.21. So I'm going to the back of my book to S20.21. S20.21 says contusion of front wall of thorax. Well, my diagnosis again said contusion of chest wall where? To the left. So at this where it says contusion of front wall of thorax, I need to identify it's of the left. So S20.211 is of the right. I need to identify left and left is S20.212. But guys, guess what? There's a box with the red number seven in it. And that indicates to me that this, in order for this code to be complete, it's going to need seven digits. S20.212 is only six digits. I need an additional seventh character. See, I would not have gotten that from my alphabetic index, which just, which just sent me to S20.21. I had to look up the code and know it's S20.212. Oops, I need a seventh digit in addition. So then I have to find the seventh digit box for this category, which is S20. And in red, mine tells me the appropriate seventh character is to be added to each code from category S20. And it's either A, D, or S. A being initial, D being subsequent visit, or S being a sequela. Well, because this is the only one I've got, it's got to be an initial. So in order to make this code correct, S20.212, I have to use one of those seventh digits. And in this code, it's the initial visit. So in order for this code to be complete, it's going to be S20.212, identifying the left side, A. Okay? And that makes this code Contusion of chest wall left, the correct code is S20.212A. And see how it took both of my code books to make this correct? Well, both of my um, volumes in my code book to make this code correct. Okay? And of course, I've got some examples for you guys. So let's move right on. Number one, acute cholecystitis with cholelithiasis. And guys, what I found helps me is when I kind of understand exactly what's going on. In this case, I have acute inflammation of the gallbladder with stones. But anyway, look that one up. Moving on, number two, acute pharyngitis due to streptococcal infection. Number three, bilateral recurrent femoral hernia with gangrene. Number four, glaucoma with increased episcleral venous pressure left eye. Okay guys. So, do your studies and try to work these four examples. Now in the end here, I'm gonna give you the answers to these four um, coding examples that I gave you, but I wanna take a break here, so if you need to stop the video and try to look up these codes yourself to see if you get the same answers, then use this time to stop the video. Code these examples, and then I'm getting ready to show you the answers, okay? And um, also, before moving on, all, another thing that I have for you to do is um, 
in addition to studying these guidelines that I've given you, go back now and view videos 10 through 19 on my channel. That further gives you examples to code. Um, so your homework is to continue going back to where we started in our guidelines. We did all A, 1A. Today we just did B, number 1B. And um, next week we're going to do um, 3 through 9 on the coding guidelines. But go back and view videos 10 through 19 by the next video as we continue. So all of this is going to start making sense. You're going to start building your knowledge of coding. Okay, guys, let me move on now and give you the answers to the four examples that I gave you. If you have any questions or concerns, email me at codemastercoach at gmail.com. And I'll see you in the next video. Here go the answers, guys. Number one, K80.00. Number two, J02.0. Number three, K41.11. And number four, H40.812. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.